Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ayyu al-habbita fillah, ahl al-sunnati wal jama'ah the Salafiyun they strive for unity in the ummah they strive for cooperation wa ta'awan ala birr wa taqwa to cooperate on piety and God-fearfulness. This is the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And many people, they observe and they believe that the Salafiyun and that Ahl Sunnah, that they oppose unity. But in fact, those people who are truly from Ahl Sunnah and truly in the Salafi Minhaj are the most people concerned with unity, but unity based on the haq, unity based on the truth, not unity based on batil. So we don't excuse one another for our difference and disunite on the things that we agree upon, la, because that was not known to the salaf of this ummah. Some great wisdom from Sheikh Muhammad ibn Umar Bazmul, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our Mashaykh, Mashaykh Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in Mecca, one of the professors in Umul Qura. He said, regarding this unity and regarding this agreeance and regarding staying away from fitna and how does Ahl Sunnah behave during fitna, he said, What can a sabah fi ittifaq Ahl Hadith? أنهم أخذ الدين من الكتاب والسنة وطريق النقل فأورث فأورث الاتفاق والاتلاف وأحلى بدأ أخذ الدين من المعقولات وأراء فأورثهم الافتراق واختلاف فإن <coughs> so the sheikh said he said, and the reason for the agreement of Ahlul Hadith, meaning Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that they took their deen from the Quran and the Sunnah, and the path, or by way of the narrators, or narration. So then they inherited agreeance and unity. But Ahlul Bid'ah, they took their religion from opinions and intellect. So then they inherited disagreement and disharmony. Then the Sheikh mentioned the statement of Imam Sheikh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmatullah, where he said, Innaka tajid ahl al kalam akthar nas intiqalin. من القول للقول وجزم بالقول في الموضع وجزم بنقيده وتقفير قائله في موضع آخر وهذا دليل عدم يقين Then the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and we'll continue on with it but we'll translate it uh, bit by bit The statement of Shaykh al-Islam he said then verily you will find the people of Kalam, Ahl Kalam, meaning like the Ashadis, the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'tazila, the Kulabiyyah, the Maturidiyyah, and other groups like this, who as a minhaj, as a methodology of understanding Islam, they used their intellect and gave their intellect precedence over the text of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, as in for their understanding of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So he said, Verily you will find from the people of Ahl Kalam that they are the people who are most quick-changing, basically the most fickle, that changing from one statement to another, and that they will be firm in adhering to one statement in one particular time and firm in breaking that same statement and considering the one who disagrees with them a disbeliever at another time 
And he said, this is evidence of the lack of yaqeen, the lack of certainty. Then he said, فَإِنَّ الْإِيمَانِ كَمَا قَالَ قَيْسَرْ لِمَا سَأَلَ أَبَوْ سُفْيَانِ عن من أسلم مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هل يرجع أحد منهم عن دينه سخطة له بعد أن يدخل فيه قال لا قال وكذلك الإيمان إذا خالت بشاشته القلوب لا يسخطه أحد Then Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said continuing on he said then verily Iman, or faith, is as uh, when Qaisar asked, or Caesar asked uh, Abu, uh, Abu Sufyan about those people who accepted Islam with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, did any one of them become dissatisfied with his religion after entering it? And then Abu Sufyan responded by saying, no. And he said, and likewise, iman or faith. If a, uh, a person's heart becomes filled with, uh, mixed with the cheerfulness of iman, then a person like this will never become dissatisfied. Then Sheikh Bazmul said, Wali had a kala bad the salaf. Wali had a kala bad the salaf. Omar ibn Abdulaziz, Wari o Rerihi. Men jaala din who rer than lil khusumat akthar tenakal. Then he brought uh, Sheikh Bazmul, uh, half of the law ta'ala said, And for this reason, some of the salaf used to say, and then he mentioned that Umar ibn Abdulaziz or other than him were from those people. That whoever makes their religion a point of argument, for argument, then this person is the person who you will see who is the most fickle. That means they're quick changing. They will constantly change. Ahabatifillah, the wisdom that we find in the statement, we'll find this in the practicality of what happens today. Meaning that you'll find people from Ahla Bida, from Ahla Kalam, from the Tekfiris, from all of these various groups, and those people who were not firm upon the Da'wah to Salafiyah, Da'wah to Ahla Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that due to their lack of firmness when the fitna and trials came, and also in part due to the fact that they always like to argue, people who always want to get in argument, that you'll find that due to this extremeness of becoming extreme and always wanting to debate every single issue with people, even if they don't have the knowledge to do so, that this will make it easy when they are defeated in their argument for them to leave the, what they were upon completely. And they'll go to the, they'll follow the next person. And there's a beautiful statement, I believe it's of Imam Malik or Imam Shafi, rahimahumullah ta'ala, which illustrates this exact point. That he mentioned that the one who loves to debate, or that if he listens and gets in arguments and debates with those people, that whoever is the best in speech, in debating, will win. So then the other person then will be forced to follow the person even if that person is not on the truth. Perhaps they're charismatic. Perhaps they're good in argumentation. So it shows us the importance of avoiding this argumentation. Don't get in debates and arguments, especially if you don't have the ilm and knowledge to do so. Don't debate with the takfiris. Don't debate with the Ashadis. Don't debate with all of these groups, the Sufis and so forth, if you don't have the knowledge and the tools to do so. And if you're not aware of the haq, the truth, with some textual proofs, so that you'll be able to defend the truth and share with them the truth. These are just some of the benefits from 
one of our ulama of Ahl Sunnah, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.